Janelle Sakura. I'm a Homeworks by Precept consultant representing BJU Press Materials. In the seven years that we've been using BJU Press Maths, we have seen our children from time and time again be able to grasp each new concept one building block at a time using manipulatives. Starting with Unifix cubes in K5 and messy math and manipulatives, the hands-on approach helps our children be able to grasp the abstract concepts in a tangible way. Let me show you what comes in this manipulative packet. It is packed with all kinds of stuff. We've got the clock. My children love helping assemble these, punch them out and organize them. I'll show you in just a minute how we do all of that. We've got work mats, construction work mats. We've got the place value mats. Those are very important. Then we have number cards, rulers, shapes, all kinds of counters, lots of great coins, and much more flashcards. It's all provided right in here for you. And how we organize that, I like to use a fan folder for our manipulatives. We will sort them into baggies, these are very inexpensive and easy to find at lots of stores. We like to color these and label them, and then it's simple for us to set out what my child needs for a day. Then I have the supply boxes. I like to use two supply boxes, one for, you know, scissors, glue, pencils, tape. Also got the foam cubes for doing math facts. Mrs. Walker recommends using these. They're great just to toss do addition or subtraction, multiplication. It's kind of a fun way to spice up our math facts. But the manipulative box, we like to get one that's compartmentalized. It has segments for the various Unifix cubes. So nice, I can sort out the different colors, put number cards in here, their place value kit strips. So this way, stuff doesn't get all jumbled together by the end of their lesson. I've learned over the years that a compartmentalized box is the way to go to keep things clean and tidy. And then last of all, we use a three-ring binder to keep their work mats in, especially the place value kit. They're going to use this a lot. So we punch holes in it, tape it together so it's easy to fold and store, and then also easy to spread out for them. So next up, we're going to take a little peek at how the rubber meets the road when your child uses manipulatives right along with their student work text and distance learning classes in BJU Press Math. All right, Joel, today we're going to be doing some cumulative review using manipulatives. Let's start with the 10 bar mat, and we are going to do some addition using Unifix cubes. So go ahead and get started. We'll set up that first add in there. This is a way to help them think of 10 when they're adding. So we'll see how that works here. Good job. We use manipulatives when we're learning a new concept. And depending on your student, you may only need to use them for a week or so, and then off and on until they take wings and soar with confidence and understanding. All right. So what's your answer? Get your pencil? 16. Good job. Go ahead and write that down. So it took two to make ten, and then we just have to look at those ones left over to see there are six more, and then we know quickly it's 16. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. All right, so we've got our equation all lined out here. Seven plus six equals? Thirteen. Good job. We'll write that down. All right. So next up, we will set up our subtraction number line here. Okay, so now we know that Patty likes to hop around on the number line. So let's do these two subtraction equations using Patty to help us solve them, okay? So go ahead and grab Patty here and get started. 17 and hop back. Good job. All right, write your answer down. So we know through using these manipulatives that 
subtracting is going backwards or less of something. Let's do one more. Go ahead and start on the 12, and we'll count back. One, two, three, four. Good job. Write your answer. All right, now we've got our place value work mats along with our place value kit, and we are going to solve this story problem, Joel. So let's go ahead and read it together. Matt and Patty watched the men load fish onto a boat. There were 365 black fish and 228 rockfish. Now here's the question. How many fish were loaded onto the boat? All right, sweetheart, let's get set up. So we'll start with the ones. Go ahead and get your ones set up. Are we going to be adding or subtracting? Adding. That's right. Put that little plus sign in there. All right, Joel, so go ahead now that we're all set up and group your ones together. Okay, the place value kit brings the real value of each place to life. My son can see the value in the ones place is quite different than the tens or hundreds place. So we have more than nine ones, so he is going to make those extra ten ones into a ten bar. Presto! Now add your numbers together. Go ahead and write down the ones place. How many ones did you have left over after you renamed? Good, you have to add in that extra 10 and then group your 10s together. How many do you have? Good job. All right, got nine of them. Mm -hmm. Good job. And then how many hundreds? Mm -hmm. Good job. All right, so we can see that we have 593 fish. We've got it labeled there. So let's put this away. Good job, Joel. It's fun to use that place while you can. It adds a bit of time, but it is well worth it in the end. Okay, so next up, Joel, we are going to review measuring centimeters, okay? So there's your centimeter ruler. Go ahead and measure that little tail there. Oh, pretty tiny. It's two centimeters. We practice with inches, and then they learn the metric system as well with centimeters. Good job. All right, now we've got our fraction work mat out, and we are going to do a little bit of fraction review. Joel usually watches his distance learning classes with his math, but it's fun to review together sometimes. Okay, son, go ahead and put that hole in there now. If you are going to get a fair share for two people, what fractions are you going to use to divide that hole? Good job. You're right, one half and one half makes the same amount as one hole. Now, how about if you've got seven people who want to share that pot? What are you going to do? Good job. You're going to use your one seven. Get those all laid out there. This makes a very tangible way for them to grasp these abstract concepts like we talked about earlier. Joel can plainly see that a whole number is much smaller when divided into seven pieces, but it still equals the same whole. Good job, Jolie. That ends our review for today.